All right, let's see what we got going here. See how the stream looks. See if everything is clear. Give it a minute. Uh, OBS. OBS. What is going on? Stream health is good. Everything looks good. Let's see what we got. All right. Hey, WB, how you doing? Man, I got uh, got everything set up, had it going, and we are going live. <laughs> Man, last night I started testing out the uh, OBS and going through so many different settings, so I ran that test uh, to make sure everything was working efficiently. And then this morning, go to fire it up. I don't know what it is. Something's going on with the OBS software. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's my computer. Uh, it, my computer's demise, uh, which could be as well. Uh, but I go to fire up OBS, and it delays, delays, delays. Doesn't open. I try to open it a couple times. Um, finally, it opens up, and it opens up. Uh, well, the first time I try to open it, it says... Um, All right, hey, Ralph, how you doing? Uh, look forward to seeing you here. We'll wait around. We'll hang out. <laughs> um, but... Uh, man, it's uh, it's really it's frustrating sometimes, and every every uh, every article you read or or YouTube video that you check out um, in in regards to uh, getting the best streaming with the least amount of lag and and all of that uh, is definitely uh, a little trying. I thought I had the settings tweaked uh, pretty nicely, um, but now it's look as I look over onto. This side, it looks like it's delayed. I gotta, you know, I gotta pull this up on a different, uh, let me know if you guys can hear me. I'm gonna pull this up over here. I love my other laptop. Let's see. Great. Go straight into the, uh, commercial. Let's see what we got. Oh, no, look at that. Okay, it looks like it's working good. Right? There we go. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Let's see what we got here. Get out of that. Gonna give it a give it a few minutes when we get some uh, people to uh, join in. It's a little bit late getting started. Oh, I gotta turn down this volume. Hang on a second. There we go. All right. This way I can monitor. <laughs> At the uh, make sure I can monitor the stream and it's going okay. If you guys ever see, if you see any lag, if there's anything that's held up, uh, just uh, let me know and we'll get started here in a minute. Sorry for getting started a little bit late, um, but as I was just saying, I was having some OBS glitches and in reality, um, I was a few minutes late putting on the uh, Segfredo Espresso and obviously that takes uh, priority. Uh, I started, I work out every single morning and I have been looking into different breathing exercises, breathing techniques, and I discovered uh, Win Hof. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of uh, Win Hof. It's W-I-N-H-O-F. And so I've been using this uh, Win Hof app, kind of going through different breathing techniques. And if you watch some of the videos that Win Hof does, um, it's actually, it's interesting because it's mind over matter, uh, mind over matter. And so Win Hof, He's he actually hiked uh, I believe it's the uh, he, he hiked up Mount Everest and went up to the death zone uh, and he hiked up in shorts uh, with no shirt on and he just brought a group I was watching a video uh, with Yes Theory and those guys normally put themselves kind of through um, extreme scenarios or stressful scenarios and then he program was interesting watching and took them into a hike uh, it waist deep they ended up waist deep in the snow and they're all wearing shorts and and no shirt. Uh, jumping into ice baths and all of that. So uh, Win Hof adheres to uh, breathing, meditation technique, and then also um, he does uh, ice baths, ice swimming, that sort of thing. And it's it's actually kind of cool. So. Well, good morning to everybody joining in. Uh, we've got WB uh, commenting so far. We've got Ralph coming in from London. Uh, last night, I had a small group on as I was running some test streams. Um, definitely look forward to the uh, conversation this morning. So we're going to 
kick it off and and really go through uh, some good uh, some good topics. So there's there's so much going on right now uh, in this space, and we want to make sure that we we cover it. We want to make sure that we kind of uh, dig into it a little bit, make sure we understand it, um, and when it when it you know really comes to and when one of the uh, primary focus points that I've had lately uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to digital assets when it comes to uh, blockchain technologies uh, what have you uh, my my focus is really uh, into uh, the government uh, government clarity government regulation uh, and really staying on top of uh, what's happening uh, from that perspective it that's that's really important um, if we want to see the full development of the space if we want to see what's uh, truly transpiring um, if we want to really identify uh, the significance of what this means to our economy uh, we don't really have to look that much further uh, than what government is doing we don't have to look that much further uh, than what uh, the financial institutions are doing and we don't have to look that much further to what the banks are doing um, and when you see uh, the adoption or the research into uh, and and this goes way back you know so if we go way back in, you know way back could be a year ago whatever I'm thinking way back in terms of when I started uh, some of these videos um, and I started looking into uh, different patents uh, the companies that were that we're preparing patents and we see banks uh, we see Walmart you see a lot of uh, uh, companies that you wouldn't really anticipate uh, that would be filing for patents into blockchain uh, companies that were looking into the utility of digital asset uh, and, and really across all spectrum all industry um, and obviously we understand that blockchain technology has an application in in many different industries um, not just in in the banking not just in the payment uh, side of things which it definitely does um, and does uh, have the uh, the structure for simplifying uh, the payment process uh, for creating transparency within the payment process but what's interesting is you break it down and you and you start looking at all the technologies uh, that can that can uh, adopt blockchain technology and can also adopt a digital asset it's it's staggering because it's pretty much our entire uh, economy uh, meaning it all manufacturing uh, healthcare government voting whatever whatever it might be um, ID you know our, our identification um, there, there it really crosses uh, every it goes into into every every aspect so as we then look into why is it significant to have uh, government uh, regulation why is it important to have government clarity uh, and government really then I, I don't want to say gives permission to um, but allows for um, the uh, really allows for a more uh, um, acceptable uh, so to speak um, and I, I don't know why I can, environment <laughs> I can't think but a more of an acceptable environment for uh, companies or corporations to then uh, get into and adopt the blockchain uh, technologies or the or the digital asset technologies into uh, the mainstream into the mainstream whether it's from a corporate side or from the retail side or from you know the individual investment side however you want to look at it it's going to go and it is going uh, mainstream through through full uh, adoption now we're seeing this we've seen a number of uh, of uh, use cases for voting uh, which is pretty impressive um, and really if you want to create the most transparent means uh, possible uh, for voting then uh, blockchain technology is extremely extremely significant so um, that's kind of a, a little bit of a, a starter um, but hey this is um, Jeff with the with the huddle report um, today the title of the video um, I labeled ripple XRP brings uh, peace to the Middle East and really um, <laughs> it really should be a piece of uh, of economic uh, boom or economic well-being um, so maybe it should be spelled uh, p-i-e-c-e -E, but peace also because it, through economics uh, you also achieve peace through economics through technology uh, you can achieve peace uh, economics really impact 
everybody. So, and, and if you want to gain economically, you have to have environment uh, within your country uh, and within your region uh, in order to all benefit uh, from, from the economic boom. So, hey, Ralph, uh, what, uh, what brand of uh, tea did you, are you uh, drinking? Yeah, <laughs> so, somehow I don't think they are, but maybe. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, so, so I think, yeah, that, that's a, a definitely a part of it, WB, you know, and, and when you see the integration of uh, XRP, but I'll get into that here uh, in a little bit. Um, I think it's, it's really important. TWG. <laughs> Um, what is it? There's, there's one, it's out of Boston. Um, it's called Berry's Tea, but you wouldn't know about it. But it's actually the closest to a, a quality British tea that you can get in the U.S. Um, other than going for an import, something made in the U.S. But you've got, uh, what is that, PG, PG uh, uh, Tibbs, Tibbs or Tibbs? Um, there's, there's a bunch over at the uh, British store over here. So... But let, let me let me kind of drill down through this. I want to break it up. I have a I'm going to go over a few things from a kind of external news perspective. Then let's get into uh, the XRP environment. We'll talk a little bit about what's going on, in my opinion, uh, regarding uh, the adoption of of the digital assets, the adoption of XRP within the Middle East environment, and also some of the uh, significance of what's happening regionally. Uh, that's really changing and and there's a lot of things that kind of came to light recently I was speaking to somebody uh, that actually works uh, in terrorism research and 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 it's interesting some of the things that he told me about the Middle East uh, recently a luxury tea brand that launched in Singapore interesting and I'll tell you what I've got uh, uh, British neighbors, and there, there's nothing like going over there for a, cu a good cup of tea. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know how they, how they do it any different than, than I do, but they said it has something to do with the timing of, of uh, the tea bag and the water and the right quantity of milk and, and all of that, and if you don't do it right. So I just, I just uh, settle on espresso. It's a lot easier to make in the uh, stove top. So, all right, so... Um, so economic peace, we talked about that. Uh, obviously, the Middle East is 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 a huge uh, is is a huge uh, region for uh, cross border transactions. Obviously, that's significant. Obviously, we have a lot of crude oil coming out of that area. Um, but you know, just to just to kind of uh, top off this this little uh, idea, and then we'll get back into it in a minute. Uh, but the Middle East, in my opinion, is really ripe. Uh, for development, especially uh, when we see the things that we're seeing coming out of Saudi Arabia as they're embracing, and it, it you can't really say full westernization um, ex and expansion, but they're embracing an expansion into um, high-tech business. And, and I think it's interesting. And they are beginning to implement uh, little, uh, little by little uh, areas of, of westernization. But um, so uh, the so going through some of the topics I want to talk about uh, today. So that XRP uh, bringing peace to the Middle East, uh, FUD and false flags from Forbes um, that seems to be ongoing. Um, Nigeria in the crypto space, I think that is interesting um, because we're starting to see uh, and and really the base premise of 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 digital assets and the base premise of, of what blockchain technology uh, can do for us, we're witnessing um, in some of these uh, uh, developing countries. So when we see in Africa where they have the opportunity uh, to develop uh, a, a technology, when they have the opportunity to utilize uh, digital assets for the betterment of, uh, and you know, for, the, for their development, the betterment and development of themselves, um, and those around them is, is really significant. Hey, Spanish Fly, how you doing? Uh, glad you guys could join in. I know it's early, um, 
I, I would actually like to do this earlier if I would start at seven, but then I don't think I'd have anybody uh, joining in at all. So, um, so, so check this out, and you guys might have seen this, um, but uh, and this this kind of borders on on uh, I, I kind of on on the premise that we're talking about um, a little bit, but this is Forbes, you know. So Forbes seems to continuously uh, be stepping into and peddling. Uh, FUD news stories when it has to do uh, with digital assets, when it has to do with blockchain. In my opinion, it's getting a little bit old, um, but we just saw, so obviously New Zealand. So let's let's talk a minute about New Zealand and then we'll, we'll focus in on what in the world is, is Forbes uh, doing. That's my dog over here. Um, he's hanging out under my feet. He thinks he has to protect me from uh, whatever noise is outside. So... Um, so with with New Zealand and and we pro and you probably all saw you know on the news you know the reaction uh, to what happened over there. Obviously, it was horrific uh, what happened over in the mosque. Uh, you don't anticipate stuff like that happening. That's the worst thing that that anybody can do. Um, definitely not uh, you know not something that we would ever you know embrace any of us. Um, and you have one individual out of how many billions on earth uh, that chose to do something like that. So it's completely heinous uh, and beyond reproach. Uh, but the government, and this is where, and, and I talked a little bit about and, and the other night on Thursday, we got a little bit more into government regulation. We talked about what Texas is doing. I know when we talk about a political thing, when it comes to a bill versus what these, this horrible event over in New Zealand. Uh, but what I want to focus on here is a little bit of the, uh, uh, the overreach, government overreach, uh, and really government response uh, from an emotional perspective or in a rational perspective or when government is in reactionary mode instead of being in proactive mode. You know, we all need to be in, in a, in, especially for ourselves. If we want to be in a better place, we need to be in proactive mode. We have to uh, proactively do things that are best for ourselves, best for our friends, best for our family. We don't want to always live our lives in reactionary mode. When you're living in reactionary mode, you let emotions uh, get the better of you and then you make irrational decisions. Uh, same thing when you're, when you're investing. Uh, if you're investing money and you do it and you're reacting to everything around you, but you didn't proactively set up a plan ahead of time, then you're going to start trading with emotions. Now, the government does the exact same thing. So if we look at what happened in New Zealand, and I know it's, it's hard to compare these types of things, but my point is really focused in on on government overreach and government reaction. But the, the government of New Zealand decided to uh, ban uh, all uh, military style uh, style uh, firearms uh, based on the act of one individual, which was horrible, um, but they're starting to make some very illogical decisions and irrational decisions, which are in reactionary mode instead of being in proactive mode um, and really trying to identify uh, and, and, and help from a larger perspective, not, you know, micromanaging to a point where you're going to begin to overreach and you're going to impede on the rights of other individuals that are law abiding. So if you have a million people that are law abiding and one individual is non law abiding, do you change all of your laws that will then uh, handcuff the million people that are law abiding because of the actions of one? That makes no sense. You punish the actions of the one and you make sure that the rest are not going to uh, act in, in a similar fashion. So that is government overreach. That is government being irrational. Um, now, in same thing in Texas. Texas is in a reactionary mode uh, when they're uh, passing a bill that is going to really impact uh, the digital asset space, impact uh, blockchain companies from wanting to be in the state of Texas. I know it's hard to look at these comparisons, didn't really want to go there exactly, but uh, just to kind of uh, put it out there. Now, Forbes. So Forbes, and, and this is, I guess, really the, the, the point, is that Forbes decided that they were going to write an article and go down this path exactly. 
So their, their article uh, was specifically focused on the fact that this New Zealand shooter happened to mention BitConnect. And so what does Forbes do with this? Forbes takes this uh, to, uh, to an extreme uh, and their statement uh, and their title is New Zealand mosque shooters mention of BitConnect could set back Bitcoin acceptance. So this is Forbes now tying these together. This isn't anybody else. Nobody's saying any, anything different. But what this does do, uh, and again, you know, if you look at Forbes, you would anticipate the Forbes magazine being a, uh, or, or a news site being one of uh, reputable status when you're talking about economics, and yet they continuously are putting out uh, these FUD stories. Oh, look at that. I look like I'm uh, jumping around. Let me look at my uh, thing here. What's going on? Uh, let's see. Okay. I guess that was just momentarily. Um, yeah. Uh, Mike. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Crawfish. Welcome to the, uh, to the stream. Early morning. We get to talk about some good topics here. Uh, Forbes has definitely lost their credibility. Uh, and, it, and it's crazy. Um, WB, yes, this is definitely their uh, uh, 9-11 uh, Patriot Act uh, transition point. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's definitely above and beyond, you know. And, and the thing is, is that on, on the, the other side of it, uh, just to take a step back uh, to what's happening over there, um, why is it that nobody is really paying attention uh, to uh, the violence that happens against Christians in, in Africa? Or how about the violence against uh, Christians in Lebanon? Or how about the violence against Christians in Syria? Or how about violence against Christians in Iraq? Um, or, or anywhere else in the world? You know, that, that really uh, troubles me. You know, is that you know, there's, there's not a focus. I, I didn't see the actors and actresses all rise up and start, uh, you know, and say anything about the violence uh, in any of these other areas that when it comes to Christians, you know, but, but anyhow, uh, that's a side note, but now we get into, into forums, uh, Forbes and Forbes has been launching one ridiculous article, um, after another, you know, and, and these, uh, individuals, these are contributors. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Let's see. It says here, opinions expressed by Forbes contributors are their own. So, but this, so, so you have these contributors and they put that little statement there that their own, um, but that doesn't really spell it out. Why isn't it in bold? Why does it have to be hidden uh, somewhere where you don't know exactly uh, that it is their own? And then as they get into these articles and it's one after another after another. So what is Forbes highlighting in this case? Forbes is really trying to highlight the fact that, that there's an issue when it comes to uh, Bitcoin that there's an issue because now they're trying to tie it into what happened over in New Zealand. See, this guy talked about BitConnect, uh, so obviously there, there's an issue, you know, and that's, uh, that's just crazy, you know. So uh, let, me, let me look here. So da, 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 let me find this exact statement. Um, uh, huh, and this, it's, it's crazy too. Um, so then there's, uh, what is it, PewDiePie, uh, and he's uh, one of the, 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 I think he's the number one YouTuber um, right now, uh, and so he was named, uh, and so that's kind of crazy, uh, and then we have, and then they, they get into, so they mention him, you know, because of this, uh, this uh, individual, this terrorist that went over there and, and did what he did, um, you know, and, and that is what it was, you know, terrorism. If you're going to go into someone's place of worship and do that, regardless of uh, anything else. But so then, then they get into the article. So they're already going after uh, PewDiePie on this, in this article. Um, then they go into, uh, you know, Bitcoin through the related scam BitConnect technology. Well, too, even as there are signs, mainstream Bitcoin and cryptocurrency acceptance is on the rise. Some of the, some of the writing that's appearing on, on Forbes uh, makes no sense. You know, I don't know if they're proofing any of this, if it goes through any editors, uh, but sometimes you read it and, and their sentences just don't make any sense. Uh, let's see, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency have long been used. Here we go. So, so this is the statement, and this is exactly where I think Forbes is 
going above and beyond into the wrong direction and it and it's a, it's it's really promoting uh the false flag the false narrative and now we've seen too many articles like this but here's the big statement bitcoin and cryptocurrency have long been used by terrorists and neo-nazis looking to avoid law enforcement and their traditional financial system no well okay we have seen that they just tracked um out of a research organization out of israel tracked uh, a direct tie to Coinbase wallets of movement of funds to the terrorist group Hamas, but they actually tracked it and they found it. How about the, the, the cash flow of billions of dollars in fiat currency that is traditionally used uh, by terrorists um, and, and others that are looking to avoid law enforcement? Uh, I, I mean, hello, that it just doesn't make it. This is crazy. Why not state that? Why not say that uh, that fiat currency has typically been uh, the uh, denomination of of what these terrorists ha have been using. You know, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. So let me just look over here. Be free. Be free. What's up? Um, no bank will trust another's coin. Another's coin. Oh, you're talking about like JPM coin um what if banks create their own coins um let's talk about that uh in a minute um i think i think that's important um we'll get into that in one minute before we get into other things i think that's a great topic uh and if you focus in on what's happening with uh with jpm and and some of the others but hang on a second um let me see this is another statement here Okay, then they get back into why Bitcoin. Then they say U.S. grocery chain Kroger, after a row with payments processor Visa, was reported to be looking at Bitcoin as one alternative. So here he is bashing it in this article. So the, the headline of its New Zealand mosh shooters mention a BitConnect could set back. Then they get into uh, the terrorists using it. Then they're talking about Kroger adopting it. Um, but it's it just kind of, uh, let me see here. Then they get into some other technologies and they talk about heavyweights like Jack Dorsey uh, to Steve Wozniak have spoken about their belief you know so is he bad mouthing it is he not bad bad mouthing it but then he finalize you know he sums up so he puts all that in the middle um, and then he's trying to create this balance and then he sums up uh, oh you know what let me put this this article I'll, let me just put the link yeah so here it says, is it anyone's responsibility to address Tyrant's mention of BitConnect or is it something best ignored? This question is going to be asked by corporate giants who are considering acceptance of Bitcoin related technologies. And I don't think so. I think that that is just uh, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Hang on. Let me take this and I will make sure that I put this into uh, the description uh, of, the, uh, of the channel. So that it's it's there, and I can I can probably post it up into the comments as well. But I'm gonna put it right there. Let me uh, let me post it up here as well. If you guys want to check it out, there we go. I think that posted up. So all right, um, and then I want to get back. Hang on one second. Um, all right, so so let's get in. Let's let's talk a little bit about um, XLM. Worldwire, XRP, JPM. I think that's a, a great uh, segue over uh, before we get into to some of the other things. Um, since you guys brought that up, I think that's that's important. Um, so in my opinion, I agree with Ralph. I, I firmly believe that the space is big enough for XRP and XLM. I'm also of the uh, mindset that you need to diversify uh, your investments, your portfolio, whether it's in the digital asset space, whether it's with stocks, whether it's with real estate, whether you want to put it into commodity, um, whether or not you want to put it into uh, precious metals, whatever you want to do, um, it's good to have some diversification in your portfolio. I also think that you know you can't be uh, so single-minded um, when it comes to the different technologies. If your choice is to invest only in XRP, that, that's your choice. But if somebody else decides they want to invest in XLM, it doesn't serve anybody in this, in this uh, 
in this space it doesn't serve anybody's interest to start bad mouthing others you know we already see the bitcoin maximalists bad mouthing pretty much all all, all altcoins um but even even that is obviously wrong um there's definitely enough space here and the other thing is you know when we're looking at xrp you're looking at xlm you're looking at the adoption um through ibm which ibm you know yes it's it's a it's a dinosaur in terms of uh the hardware technology they ibm has been firmly uh uh really firmly in place uh with uh corporations globally uh, it's definitely a name uh, that's recognized from a hardware perspective from a mainframe perspective um, ibm is definitely well known uh when it comes to uh the banking industry as a whole uh and so the fact that they're getting into the payment space probably isn't that big of a surprise being that they've already been there so if you have a blockchain based company a software based company looking for a partnership to get into that space um obviously stellar uh did their homework and ibm did their homework and they ended up coming together and so i'm not saying if you know if uh ripple the ripple net solution is better or this new world wire is better that's not the point uh right at this second uh the point is there's enough room uh in this space uh, for both of them and I talked about this on a, on a previous video but uh, you know with that you know there's definitely enough room and the focus with all of that really needs to be on you know what does all of this mean for digital assets what does this mean for the growth of the cross-border space utilizing digital asset utilizing blockchain technology as opposed to utilizing swift and so that is that's the focus so as Swift probably isn't going to go away anytime soon, and Ripple's chipping away at, at their at their membership percent by percent, bank by bank, organization by organization. So is XLM. So or or uh, IBM's WorldWire will do the same. So they acquired six banks that are going to be utilizing their entire solution. That is significant. Any way you want to look at it, that has um, a lot of significance. So. So when, when we when we identify uh, when we identify uh, the movement and the trend uh, in this space as we're moving into a, the digital age of cross border payments, why in the world would we want to uh, what we, would we want to bash uh, a competing technology or not competing technology but a competitor with the same technology that is proving the use case? If you have one organization trying to prove the use case, how in the world are you going to go mainstream if you only have one company that's focused on it? You need to have multiple companies, um, and that creates the competitive uh, the competitive environment to make everybody better. Because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're providing the best solution to the end user customer, whoever that might be, whether it's retail or corporate. Um, so through that, you want to make sure you're providing the best solution. But if you're going to buy, provide the best solution, um, then you, you really need to have competition. Otherwise, you become uh, static. Uh, and if you, if you become static in, in, your, in your development, then you're not going to push the boundaries and try to do something better. Because you're going to say, hey, you know what? I've, I've developed ABC and it works fine. I like it. Um, and now this other company developed A, B, C, and D, and now you're like, holy crap, I've, I don't have D. I need to develop D too, and I need to do it better. And maybe I can do A, B, C, D, but I can do it only within my A, B, C. I'm just <laughs> throwing out something ridiculous, but, but that's the point. And so now you have the competition, and everybody's you know fighting to be better, and we're fighting over the customers. Now, there's lots and lots of customers out there that can use this technology. Swift is the dinosaur that's trying to keep up and maintain the relevance uh, in this space. And so as you have IBM WorldWire, again, you cannot you know, undermine the fact that it's a significant player uh, in this industry, mainly because of the name and reputation of IBM. So... <clears throat> So to that, to, to you know, to that note, uh, we have we really have to look at it and say, okay, 
we we appreciate uh the competition now if you want to get into an internal argument or a discussion you know <coughs> it just got really dry in here i shut off the dehumidifier that i run so um <clears throat> so you can have a discussion and analyze uh the viability of uh, of IBM WorldWire as opposed to RippleNet if you're going to compete in the same space, you know, then that that definitely uh, makes sense. You see, uh, uh, tap, what, uh, what does that say? Tapped line? Tap, tapped? Tapped or tapped? Tap line, yeah, uh, I agree. And, and welcome to the channel. John Adams, welcome to the channel. Uh, glad you guys made it on. Welcome everybody else for joining early in the morning. Uh, glad you guys are here. Um, I really appreciate that and you know joining in on the conversation there's there's so much to talk about uh, John FedEx went live with blockchain a month ago and they're they're using XLM they're using the uh, uh, stellar uh, uh, protocol stellar platform um, there, there's a lot to that so so this this is really significant and there was a lot of you know critique uh, that came out against stellar you know calling it more centralized be uh, because of uh, um, because of the fact that uh, that you know maybe a majority of of the uh, of the XLM is held by by one party. The point we're not debating which one's a better investment. We're debating uh, the cross border space uh, as we see two rising up to compete against a Swift. I think that's that's the focus. If we want to talk about where do you want to put your money, um, I invested in XLM to hedge the bet because you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, the same thing when, when you saw the boom, uh, and, and this goes back to an interesting interview uh, with Jeff Bezos, uh, or Bezos uh, from, uh, from the late 90s uh, <clears throat> that was, that was uh, I think it was on, uh, on CNBC, NBC, what, whatever. Um, but it was uh, posted up there on Twitter for a little while. And if you look at the significance of what he said, was that during that time frame, nobody knew who was going to come out on top. You have a lot of amazing technologies, and there were some companies that didn't make it. Um, but he didn't know either. You know, for Amazon, you know, was Amazon going to succeed? His focus was the customer, providing the best customer service, the best customer support, uh, the best customer experience with the best pricing. That was his focus. And, and he said he doesn't know if Amazon will be the big company to make. And this, again, this is back in the late 90s. But look what happened because he was, he was very focused and driven. And so we're seeing the same thing as you're seeing an IBM WorldWire that's utilizing uh, the Stellar uh, uh, protocol, the Stellar platform. You have Ripple that, with RippleNet. Now, obviously, Ripple has done something amazing. <clears throat> Sorry. Ripple has done something amazing with the RippleNet solution. And so, and, and as you're starting to see this space develop, really there's, there's two primary digital assets right now that have a significant use case. You have XRP because of uh, RippleNet, because of everything else that's happening in this space. Uh, you have Coil. <coughs> ah, this is bad. <laughs> So, so there's, there's a ton happening with, with XRP. Uh, and then, yeah, now, <clears throat> give me one second. Between the coffee and the water, I got to get. <laughs> and the dog. So, but, you know, the, the point is, is that within this space, you know, there's so much uh, momentum, so much uh, movement in the right direction. And so, you know, when we get into, like you just mentioned, uh, John Adams, you know, you know you're, you're talking about, um, uh, what is it, uh, BITA? What is BITA, B-I-T-A? What does that stand for? Um, but if, you know, if they're going to be using XLM, if FedEx is going to use XLM, if uh, WorldWire um, is going to <clears throat> utilize um, XRP, you know, is it going to utilize XLM? You know, RippleNet we could see is is definitely a significant uh, <clears throat> is definitely a significant competitor in the space, doing amazing things. Um, and then when we look at what's happening on the other side 
uh, with XRP. So there's development going on all over the place uh, that's going to be using XLM or is going to be using XRP. And we just saw the tie-in of XRP into WooCommerce uh, to accept XRP payments. We saw the tie-in into Microsoft Outlook uh, to use uh, XRP payments to send through email. You know, that that's pretty amazing. You know, I think that is significant. That's showing the development within this space with true utility. <clears throat> oh, yes, the Blockchain Transport Alliance. That's right, uh, Bitta. I had actually, I talked about that before. Um, that is, that's a good one uh, to me. And, and you think they're going to be using uh, XLM? I think, yeah, that one is, that's amazing. That's really impressive. When you look at uh, the, the transport, now overall the utility of, of blockchain within the logistics space is amazing. And it, it's so needed. You know, you definitely need to have that. Uh, that's awesome. So this is where, so, okay, so now you take that sidestep and you look and, you know, I'm just providing my own opinions. You got to do your own research, make up your own mind on, on how you want to invest. <clears throat> what you want to invest in but me personally you know i diversify stocks get into digital asset diversified in the digital asset you're better off you know in the long run diversification so it's interesting you know xlm being utilized in in, in logistics uh, xrp being utilized in in payment uh, and then we're going to see uh, the XRP ledger being utilized in many other areas, just like uh, you're starting to see uh, XLM uh, being utilized based on the Stellar platform as well. So there's really, again, when you look around, how many other digital assets have real live use cases that are being implemented as we speak right now? And so that goes back again uh, to um, XLM and anybody undermining the fact that IBM Worldwire has tied up a relationship with six banks because it's not just six individual branches that they tie up with it's six banks you know and so within the, that customer you know how many branches could there be um, just like with uh, with Ripple when RippleNet they have a partner partnership or they have 200 customers <clears throat> that are currently utilizing uh the ripple net solution i mean that and the number of branches you know so it it becomes you know it, it really becomes amazing as to what can happen so um so that's 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 on that note um let's see uh, uh ralph sending value through email is major <clears throat> it should move that would be awesome yeah uh Wits uh, Wind and his team are, are really doing some amazing things. Talking about taking a lead in this space. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, you know, what, what he is doing uh, to change uh, the uh, economics and, and the payment structure at the retail level, the individual level. And I'll tell you uh, just a, a quick story. Um, so this past week, or it was actually last weekend, um, I, I was uh, I contacted Extra Hardcore. He does some uh, great graphics. I reached out to him. I said, "Hey, you know, uh, can you do some uh, graphics for me?" And so, anyhow, uh, the point is, uh, he's he's uh, doing up some graphics. And then, from a payment perspective, you know, I could have gone through PayPal, but why would I do that? That doesn't make any sense. I said, "Hey, let me let me send you some XRP uh, because that's easy." And within seconds. He, he received the XRP. That was the first time that I'd used XRP uh, to buy. And it was the first time I used a digital asset to buy anything other than other digital assets. <laughs> so um, I thought that was amazing. Um, and I just sent it, you know, wallet to wallet. Now imagine if I could have uh, uh, sent it to him through Gmail or, you know, obviously I could have used the, uh, <clears throat> the XRP tip bot. Uh, to send it, you know, but that that would be relatively uh, limited uh, in terms of the scope of. But it's so easy, and there's no processing, so that's so awesome, you know. So without the processing, uh, the the high processing costs. So if you do it through PayPal, PayPal takes their cut, and then if I would have processed on Visa, then they would have gotten their cut. They get their one and a half to three percent, 
PayPal gets what one and a half to three percent. I don't know what it is. So on on the buyer's end or the seller's end, <clears throat> he takes a major hit uh, every time someone uses PayPal. He takes a major hit every time someone uses a credit card. Now, if you're able to uh, transfer through a digital asset like an XRP or even uh, XLM, since we we're talking about that, the transaction cost is minimal, and so the seller doesn't take that hit so imagine if from a seller's perspective obviously in a creative environment it's your time you're just selling time for money but if you're selling a product if you're selling a good and and you have a markup on it and let's say your markups 20 percent uh but now you're taking six percent of the value of the product and you got to cover cost of transaction imagine what that does to your bottom line so now you have to factor in well if i'm going to lose six percent of from the cost of the or from the from the sale price of the product that I'm spending in transaction now I've got to increase my price point in order to cover that so I can get the margins that I need uh, when I'm selling my goods otherwise I'm not going to be in business or I've got to cut back somewhere else and so I think about this all the time so if you're selling a $100 item and and so you've got your 6% or your 3% transaction cost um, but imagine now if you're selling a $50,000 good, you know, and someone wants to put it on on a credit card, which happens. Uh, people want, you know, in, in when they're using, especially in a business environment, um, if you're using the American Express Platinum card or if you have the American Express Black card, um, it's, it's easy uh, to use that uh, for all of your, uh, your, your purchasing to pay off your invoices. Now, um, from the seller's perspective, if they're going to accept that American Express to allow you to buy a product, a $20,000, $30,000, $50,000 product, whatever it is, $100,000, whatever, if they're going to allow you to utilize that card for that transaction, now all of a sudden they're taking a hit and that's a huge hit. So if you have to factor in 3%, um, that that's that's a lot, you know, and so that could that's going to cut into your margins. Um, now, if you flip this over and you look at what's happening on the digital asset side, I'm probably I'm obviously preaching to the choir here, uh, but what a significant savings, you know, and and it's immediate. So when you do it, here's here's the the thing, and and this is the tie-in, and this is part of uh, uh, part of what needs to be uh, corrected or added. I don't want to say corrected. Part of what needs to be added is consumer protection. So when we look at, and there's a side note, the Token Taxonomy Act, if you look at what's going on from a congressional uh, perspective for regulatory clarity, the Democrats are really focused on, on consumer protection. The Republicans are very focused on jobs and business growth when it comes to this space. You know, but consumer protection is important. So if I'm going to transfer over, if I'm going to transfer over uh, twenty or thirty thousand uh, dollars to you, then then I want to make sure uh, that that I'm that I'm protected. That if you don't deliver, uh, that my money transferred over uh, isn't going to be tied up. You know, meaning that I that I have some sort of uh, action that I can take. Now, is it okay for me if I transfer thirty thousand dollars to you and and you don't deliver the goods? Um, Obviously, you need a third-party intermediary uh, to facilitate uh, the, 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 and mediate uh, that debate. Obviously, that's what attorneys are for, but you need some mechanism in place that could you know, tie up those funds uh, temporarily, uh, almost like you know, if you're doing an international uh, transfer and you're using a letter of credit uh, and you're using an intermediary bank, uh, that is then holding those funds until the letter of credit terms are fulfilled from both the buyer and the seller's perspective. So something similar uh, needs to happen. Now, when you're buying with a credit card, the credit card and the credit company um, basically works as that intermediary uh, because, uh, but they're transferring uh, the funds over uh, to the uh, to the seller. However, if the buyer for whatever reason decides to complain uh the the credit card uh could very easily um take those funds back and and penalize the seller uh so it's important even in the utilizing digital assets to have that intermediary as well so anyhow all right uh and i went down down that path um and it, 
meant to focus here. If you guys have any uh, feedback, comments, uh, let me just go back up here a little bit. See here. <clears throat> All right. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just going to go back to a comment here that, that Ralph put up. Uh, so funny, where we are now is roughly where a few people were in the very early days of Apple, Google, Facebook. We may be just part. We may just be part of history, uh, and, and I do agree with that. You know, so but we don't know the exact direction that all of this is going to take. Uh, we can surmise the direction it's going in based on uh, the history of other companies, um, and you see the growth trend. Um, and like an Amazon, if you're very customer oriented and focused, so and that's where um, Ripple is an example. If we were invested uh, in Ripple as a company, if we were able to buy shares in that company, if they were to launch an IPO and have shares in that company, we would have a direct impact uh, of the uh, increase or improvement or, or add-on of customers um, and the financial uh, gains, uh, then we would, we would obviously benefit. Uh, have, holding the digital asset, uh, it's all gonna be based on utility. Um, but I, I agree you know, in that same vein uh, that as uh, an app or as a Google or as a Facebook grew um, and expanded, um, the same thing within the digital asset space. Again, this is my opinion, uh, strictly, but through utility uh, of the digital asset, that will have a direct impact on supply and demand of that digital asset. And this is just, again, focused in on what could potentially happen uh, within, uh, within this cross-border payment space. Now, uh, uh, hey, Ed, how you doing? Uh, glad you could join in. Good morning. Um, you know, uh, on, the, on the other side of it, if you take like, uh, if you look at Kin, for instance, K-I-N, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I got a transfer. I bought Ken also way back. Uh, so in that 2017 period, uh, adding a bunch of things in. Uh, but Ken is an example. Uh, their only purpose in utility was to be used in their messaging platform uh, to, to exchange whatever. Um, and I thought it was interesting. I didn't put a lot in it and it was super cheap. And I said, if it just goes up a fraction. So at that time, when I first got in, I was thinking, I said, oh, you know what? This is interesting. I didn't know much about uh, the digital asset space. I said, oh, you can trade digital assets and, and make money, but you know, everything's way too speculative, uh, in my opinion, uh, to trade. And, and I think at the end of the day, even with stocks, if you're going to trade stocks, you better know what the hell you're doing and, and have a uh, and have a good understanding of the technicals in stocks, um, but that's still as an average. If you average out your buys and sells, you're going to have losses. You're going to have buys. If you go into it with a good strategy in stock trading, then you could potentially come out ahead. Um, and so you have to be so careful. And that's I got. I stopped trading pretty much immediately in the digital asset space. But I bought and held a kin. But I get my point is. With with Kin, for instance, what's their utility? You know, uh, what what's their their real? You know, where's their expansion? Uh, they don't really have full global uh, utility and expansion uh, uh, potential. It's very limited. It's a cool use case, similar to now Facebook. Let's say Facebook decides to have their Facebook coin. Um, that could be interesting uh, from their perspective. Um, and we talked about that on the, the last stream on, on the fact that it could be worth billions of dollars to Facebook if they have their internal Facebook coin. You know, to me, that, that's interesting, you know. So, you know, and, and that, that's utility, but that's not here yet. And, and I don't even know, you know, overall, though, if you buy, is it going to be a stable coin? If it's not a stable coin, what is, you know, what, what's really the purpose in terms of holding uh, from an investment perspective, uh, you know, they haven't launched it yet, so you can't really uh, make a, an opinion one way or the other. But if it's a stable coin, obviously, there's really no point of holding it other than maybe sending money to people, you know. So if you're if you're on Facebook, you know, maybe buying and selling in their marketplace, uh, maybe there's savings, you know, again, one of the purposes of an internal stable coin uh, is to save individual sellers uh, a transaction cost. So if you're going to use a Visa or a MasterCard and get dinged that 3%, 
uh, as a seller, I would much rather uh, a accept if I was selling on Facebook, which I don't and I won't. Um, but if I was, I'd much rather accept if they did have a marketplace uh, that was actually uh, beneficial. So let's say their marketplace was like an Amazon. Uh, as, a, as a seller, I would much rather accept the stable coin, or let's use Amazon as an example. If Amazon has an Amazon coin, um, as a, you know, I'd rather use the Amazon, I accept the Amazon coin as a seller to not uh, get the ding of that, that 2.5%, 3%, whatever those transaction costs are. Uh, that, that makes the most sense. Um, let's see here. WB. The thing about XLM is the supply keeps increasing. Uh, Astral Wallet helps by paying you interest in XLM every Tuesday. I don't know anything about Astral Wallet. And uh, increase in supply. What's up, Rob Cash? Glad you can make it on. Yeah, if you guys uh, check out Rob Cash's uh, uh, videos, man, he's awesome. I love Rob Cash. Let's see here. Ralph, uh, uh, I can help. Uh, wait. Honestly, I can't help thinking that the price of XRP is being held down for some reason. Uh, our conspiracy theories out there are getting to... <laughs> uh, that's, that's hilarious. Young Jizzle, what's up? Glad you could join the stream. I, you know, I don't, I don't really buy into conspiracy theories uh, per se. Um, however... Um, as as we're focused in on um, time is it here oh, nine o'clock okay um, at, at, as we're uh, focused in on um, uh, oh so I just got sidetracked um, but yeah so you know, are they are they holding down XRP I mean you could you could probably make an argument for that um, that somewhere you know especially uh, but you know, I don't know. I, you know, maybe I'm not uh, smart enough uh, on the economics uh, to really look at the, the the bigger scope, the bigger picture, uh, to identify exactly what's happening at, at you know at, at the banking level, at the corporate level. Uh, but is there is there manipulation of price in stocks? Of course there is. You know, you can see it because of the media. The you know the media frenzy, one way or the other, uh, and then through the corporations, we don't know what goes on on the inside. You know, we'd hope that everything is is uh, based on 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 a supply and demand of of an individual stock. You know, hopefully that's the same. You know, with the digital asset space, we saw the the feeding frenzy of digital assets at the end of uh, 2017, beginning of 2018, uh, which led to a speculative ramp up of the digital asset valuations and pricing. Um, now, is you know from from that perspective, you know, can they can they hold back the price? Um, you know, if, if you know if they're hiding, uh, you know, and I don't, I still don't really get the full scope of how uh, the OTC, uh, if there's an impact from the OTC trading. You know, I'm not sure if there's an impact or not uh, from OTC trading. I don't know if OTC trading uh, uh, mutes uh, the impact on on pricing. Uh, maybe uh, someone someone on the on the stream now has a, has some feedback on that. Uh, that would be interesting. You know, I, I you know I don't know. But but to that point, um, it does, you know, to your point, I guess, you know, it does look like uh, they're <clears throat> they're holding back uh, the pricing uh, potential uh, of of XRP. But really, again, you know, so if you, you have to look at both sides, that's why it's hard. It's hard to buy into uh, manipulation. Uh, and, and I would like to believe that they're manipulating and holding it down. But I, I firmly believe also that uh, the, the price of XRP is tied to utility. Um, and so that's where, uh, are, you know, are, are the uh, banks and, and financial institutions waiting for this regulatory clarity uh, from the lawsuits uh, to make a determination as to whether or not XRP is a security? You know, that, that's all we can surmise is, is that's what's holding it back. Now, if you don't have full utility of the XRP, um, it's not going to increase in price, you know, because there's, you know, you have the speculative buys and sells. Now, are they building the, the base? I think they're, they're uh, really establishing the presence uh, for what could potentially happen uh, with XRP. Uh, but really, 
Uh, yeah, I agree what John just said. You know, it's a sleeping giant and you got to hold, you know, you just got to huddle and, and wait and, and see what happens. You know, whether it, you know, get, you know, seeing the, the ramp up isn't going to happen overnight. We saw the ramp up of the specu speculation and that speculative boom uh, move very, very quickly. But there was a ton, a ton of FOMO involved, especially in the media and the media hype as they saw it ramp up. But then you're, you're also looking at a ramp up of, of years, you know, so and, and so all of a sudden it kind of came to uh, it came to that point where, you know, where where everyone got super excited about the technology. And, you know, and it, what's interesting, if you try to do a comparison uh, between the digital asset space and the high tech boom, you saw a feeding frenzy of the high tech boom, also of of you know the internet uh, companies in in the 90s, and they were just giving money away for free. Anybody who put a dot com in their name uh, got money, you know. And now we saw that same thing. Anyone who had a blockchain uh, in in their name got money, you know, and it was crazy. So you know, use case, use case, use case and utility, I think is is the name of the game, you know, is the same exact uh, criteria uh, for the for the internet companies. If you didn't have a use case, and, and you just got money and you had no product to base it on, or you had an idea that you thought you could develop into something, you went away and, and nothing happened. If you're an Amazon and you had an idea, but you had a solid technology and a and a solid concept that was functional based on utility. Uh, RippleNet is a solid functional uh, product with a utility. Um, now the difference, again, you know, to, to just not belabor the point, but the difference between investing in a stock and investing in a digital asset is that the the price point of the digital asset is is strictly tied uh, to supply and demand and utility uh, of that digital asset. So as as the cross border payment space increases, uh, there's they're going to need and and it's been said, you know, the smarter minds uh, than 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 all of us, you know, from the from Ripple, you know, David Schwartz and and the rest of their team have already said that in order to facilitate uh, what they want to see happen within RippleNet when it comes to liquidity uh, and and overall uh, uh, settlement, uh, they need a much higher price point of XRP, and that only makes sense. So uh, you know that that's really you know the the focus point. Uh, let me see here. Let's see. I missed a bunch of uh, stuff going on. You guys are having a great uh, conversation here too. So. Um, so that goes back to B. Johnson. Um, I don't understand why a 30 to 32 cent price point is a sign of stability. Well, you know what? Right now, that's where it, it's at. That's, that's the stability point. What, you know, if the stability is at 30 cents and you're not seeing huge fluctuation, um, then, st then it's stable. It's, there's, there's, it's establishing a stability. Now, yes, would we be happier if it was at 50 cents or a dollar? I think someone else brought that up. You know, if you want to invest in this digital asset space uh, and you want to keep buying into it, let's say, and you're going to go into dollar cost average, would you rather dollar cost average at 30 cents or would you rather have to start dollar cost averaging and buying at 50 cents to a dollar? You know, so from that perspective, obviously we want it to be in the lower, uh, the lower uh, area. Uh, if, if we want to see gains, obviously we want to see it go to 50 cents or, or a dollar. That only makes sense, you know? Um, so, so I think that's, you know, from that perspective, right? Yeah, Rob, Rob agrees. <laughs> so um, now, Yo, know, can it go? Can it go higher? I've, obviously, that's why we're all all investing uh, in a digital asset at this point is because you know we're we're all speculating that the technologies uh, are going to are going to bring it uh, to a much higher level. Do people invest in a? Uh, you know, people are investing in a Bitcoin because they see it as 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 the uh, digital gold. You know, because that's what's been promoted. You know, so that that's just the opinion. You know, I, and that that's the that's my opinion. Um, also, you know, I think that even with a Bitcoin, you know, what's the difference between uh, investing in a Bitcoin and investing in gold? Uh, the only reason why uh, gold has assessed a value is because, you know, over the centuries, people uh, have uh, said gold has value. 
Uh, but what if tomorrow we say, you know what, gold doesn't have value? You know, but yeah, how about diamonds? Uh, you know, do we do we assess the value of a diamond accurately, or is or is the value of a diamond uh, assessed strictly because of marketing principle? And and the diamond is probably the least uh, uh, of all of the uh, of the gemstones. Um, a, a diamond shouldn't have the the uh, the value that it has because they're in abundance. Um, but they they claim them to be in, in scarcity. But there's other gemstones that are so much nicer and so much better than a diamond. Um, but the reason you know they've embraced diamonds because it it's around you know wedding and and you know everything else. So they've artificially placed. Uh, a, a price point on the diamond it doesn't have to do with supply and demand it's strictly marketing you know but you know from a from an investment perspective you look at a gold you know obviously people are investing in gold because it's claimed as a scarce item but it's also gold is accepted by the community at large as a means of value so it's the same thing with the digital asset it would be the same thing as let's say a bitcoin you know store value of a bitcoin you know why not um it, they've created a, an environment where we're moving to a digital form of payments um if the world accepts bitcoin as a store of value then then it's a store of value and we've assessed the value to it it's it's just as simple as that you know so uh utility will win exactly john you know that's exact that's ex exactly it you need to have utility uh in order and then you have to have demand so you know that all makes sense um, all right, let's see. B and B. Uh, look how it pumped through into percent in three months. I uh, still believe B and B. That is the uh, the Binance uh, coin, and you know that one is and I, and it's it's interesting too because I, you know I I didn't get into to B and B. Um, you know, yeah, Charles, that's exactly it. You know, um, uh, Effie's. Glad to have you on the uh, on the chat. Um, let's see here. A bull run isn't what XRP needs. Well, uh, that would just increase the price a little with FOMO, etc. Utilization, exactly, 100%. Uh, it's all about utility at this point. And the thing is, is that we see uh, the base being built right now for utility. Um, and as WB always says, you know, Chinese bamboo. So you guys can go look that up. <laughs> that's that's all it is you know and, and is it going to happen overnight uh probably not you know it's it's not going to happen overnight i think we got to wait for uh we got to wait for it to be built that's all wb a slow steady increase in lows is an under under appreciated thing that's right exactly now the thing is if you have if you have major booms that's dangerous um same thing in a stock if you have a trend where that stock trends way up um, that's dangerous because there's a good chance that the higher it climbs, the higher it falls. And there's a good chance that that stock's going to plummet out. Now, if you're building a solid base and you have a steady increase, you're going to be less likely to see a rapid drop. Um, all that, that does happen. Now, yeah, uh, you can see, you know, you can still see, you know, is there a good possibility of XRP going up this year? Um, we all believe firmly that it will uh, based on the base that they're building. You look at like what's Wheats, Wheats, Wheats Wind. Uh, you see what he's doing with XRP Tipbot, uh, the tie in and, and creating mainstream adoption uh, for XRP payment. That's huge. You know, that that's just huge. You know, it just shows you that we're more work moving in, in the right direction. Uh, the fact that XLM is in is is being utilized also in the cross border payment space. That's super complimentary. You know, the fact that you've got two that are fighting and focused in on, on payments is awesome. You know, and, and that's now two companies that go to government, whether it's in the U.S. or worldwide. And, and you know that the CEOs of Coinbase, the CEOs of Ripple, the CEOs and, and uh, the representation from Stellar, the CEO of IBM, the CEO of how many other companies are involved are going to government in the U.S. and requesting and stating we need regulatory clarity. You guys got to do something. We have to protect the consumer. We have to protect the business. 
And if you just have one company going up to DC saying, hey, we need this, they're gonna say, hey, well, that's because you want that because that's what's good for your, your company. But now when you have a group of CEOs uh, across the board saying this is what's good, uh, and they're going to the world stage and saying the same thing, that has a much, much bigger impact. Rob, uh, De Beers purposely created an emotional strategy to build a strong buying trend for diamonds. Exactly. And that's all it is. A good friend of mine is, is a jeweler. Um, I, I've worked with him and designed uh, quite a few things uh, for, uh, for my wife. And, and it's all, that's always a lot of fun. I enjoy it anyways. And so um, it's amazing over the years what, what I've learned about about gemstones and, and scarcity of gemstones and, and diamonds. It's just, it's just a false narrative on, on the diamond. Um, and that, that's all it is. That's all it is, just marketing. Um, Effie's Shane Ellis. It's amazing. He's got uh, a lot of amazing things uh, you know, that he writes about. Ralph, uh, Chinese bamboo. Feels like a molehill building up to Everest. <laughs> that's it. You know, there's just so much happening. We just have to have patience and, and wait to see what happens, you know, because great things are happening in this space. Uh, Microsoft saved Apple from bankruptcy back in the day. And then look at where Microsoft is. You know, Microsoft has was losing steam for a long time. Uh, their stock is doing really well right now. Apple almost uh, went away. If it wasn't for the iPhone, uh, you know, who knows where Apple would be today. Uh, Microsoft completely lost the battle for the mobile space because they lost they didn't have the vision they lost sight um, then they almost they almost became irrelevant as Google stepped into their space so here's Microsoft you know selling their uh, their software and you know onto computers and then Google comes out of nowhere uh, not really out of nowhere but <laughs> Google comes out uh, with the Chrome based and everyone laughed at it and said it's not gonna be relevant and and look at what Chrome Chrome is is dominating uh, in certain spaces right now uh, because of Google Docs and and the and the online uh, technologies uh, that they have you know so that's that's super super impressive All right, let's see here. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, let's see here. All right, so so that's a, a ton on that side. Now let me get into you know kind of what we wanted to talk about. Let's see, um, where were we at? Like an hour twenty. Whoa, didn't want to go this long. <laughs> so so anyhow, so uh, hang on. Here we go. All right, so this is uh, this is significant. Now, this is really you know what I titled uh, what I, you know the title that I put to this live stream, which is Ripple XRP bringing uh, peace to the Middle East. Now, uh, in the beginning, we talked about economics. Uh, we talked about the importance of of what uh, what economics can do uh, as a whole uh, for. Uh, uh, hang on a second. Let me pull this up here. There we go. All right. All right, now where did my article go? Okay, there we go. Hang on a second. Ah, where did it go? Great, it just froze up. How do you like that? Ah, it just froze my article. Hang on a second, there we go. All right. I don't want to allow anything. Here we go. Okay, so, so here you have... Um, uh, okay. Everything's freezing up now. Am I still live? Let's see. It looks like I'm still live. Every time I switch over, there we go. Okay. So now here it's interesting. So this was this article was on Ethereum World News, but the focus really is uh, a Sharia compliant uh, crypto uh, exchange. So there's one in Bahrain called Rain, uh, and now. Uh, is going to be accessible um, on Rain, um, a Sharia compliant uh, cryptocurrency exchange. If you get into Sharia investment, um, based on on based on uh, Sharia law to be, uh, um, then in that case, you know you can't uh, really pay interest. You can't gain interest. Oh, it looks like I'm freezing out. Somebody here.
All right, it looks like I'm frozen. It looks, oh, there we go. Did it open up? Still fro, oh, there we go. No, nope? okay. Ha, huh. that's hilarious. I'm definitely timing out here. Ah, uh, am I completely timed out now? Looks like I'm frozen. Ah, huh. you're in and out, yeah. Yep, it just looks like I just froze. I'm completely frozen. Ah, uh, come on now. Ah, uh, completely, completely froze. Oh, there we go. Okay. Is it back? How much, how long am I going to time out for? Uh, I'm completely timed out. Uh, all right, I gotta, I'm going to have to wrap this up anyways in a minute. Um, what do I do here? Let's see, I might have to just stop the stream and start over again. It looks like we're completely frozen. So here, am I, look at that, I'm just, am I, is my voice coming through and it's just the, uh, the video? Just stuttering, just the video stuttering or the voice? There we go. Live again. Or is it slow live? Uh, there we go, it's live again. Just lagging, all right. So, man, yeah, I, probably something on this side. Uh, but anyhow, so when you get it, so it's interesting and, and, you know, Sharia compliant. So to be Sharia compliant, again, uh, this is where I kind of staggered out. Uh, to be Sharia compliant, um, you can't gain interest um, and you can't pay interest. That's, that's the base concept. So I don't understand exactly how they can be Sharia compliant when it comes to uh, digital assets. But to me, I would think that um, digital assets like the value of, of uh of uh, fiat currency will increase but obviously they have a, a mechanism in place they figure it out but what's important here is that uh, rain uh, is making the uh, xrp available they'll be able to trade it against uh, the uh, bahrain dinar the kuwaiti dinar uh, the uae durham the saudi uh uh, Rial, uh, the Omen, uh, Oman uh, Rial, and the U.S. dollar, all based on on the Rain Exchange. So that's really significant. Um, so now we have XRP coming to the Middle East. And so in the beginning, I talked about you know what does that you know what kind of impact does that have? Now think about the Middle East. The Middle East. Uh, and and Saudi Arabia and Kuwait and and all and many of these countries they mentioned all. Uh, uh, their, well, their primary export is crude, uh, crude oil. Now, um, you have a lot of transfer of money going uh, for the purchase of that crude oil, whether it be through uh, uh, corporate or government. And so now making it and, and allowing the access of XRP through a, 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 a Sharia compliant uh, cryptocurrency exchange, a digital asset exchange, really brings uh, the Middle East into, uh, into this space, into uh, technology. Um, and so I also talked a little bit about uh, Saudi Arabia. And really, if you see the trend, and, and this goes back, the Middle East, you know, as, as an overall, obviously, there's a lot of bad actors that come out of the Middle East. There's a, quite a few uh, uh, groups and organizations that adhere to an extremist uh, uh, viewpoint uh, on life, an extremist viewpoint uh, when it comes to uh, Islam versus Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, um, an extremist uh, point of view on what is permissible and what isn't permissible in each country. Obviously, we've seen uh, years and years of battle uh, over there, and it's not just uh, in the past 18 years uh, since 9-11 when it impacted us here on our home soil, but it's been going on for generation upon generation. Now, we're seeing that 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 uh, generational uh, battle uh, really coming more uh, to home in terms of the westernization uh, of these countries. So we see what happened in Kuwait uh, with you have a, a lot of expats uh, that have moved over to Kuwait. You see you see a lot of the oil companies in Kuwait. If you look at what Dubai has done. Uh, over the past 10 years, 15 years, as they transitioned uh, their country away from um, 
a focus on oil uh, to being a major player uh, in the business world, uh, in the vacation world. Um, so uh, Dubai has really made a huge transition. The same thing in, in Saudi Arabia as they begin embracing more of a Western style of life. As Saudi Arabia begins to embrace uh, uh, being a, a or wanting to be a, a, a recognized um, leader uh, in the space of technology, uh, they uh, in the space of artificial intelligence. Um, so they've over the number of, past number of years, they've been rolling that out and trying to attract uh, more and more Western companies uh, to Saudi Arabia to really uh, differentiate from their old way of doing things. Now, is it going to happen overnight? No way, uh, because it's too deeply ingrained over there, and there's too many that adhere to an extremist mentality uh, to be over. Overly accepting. However, little by little, um, you start seeing women being able to drive. You start seeing the acceptance of technology, again, of the artificial intelligence, of the digital asset space, of the blockchain space. Um, you start seeing uh, Saudi Arabia and Israel uh, corresponding with one another. Um, you start seeing uh, Israel corresponding with other countries in the Middle East uh, for cooperation, for economic cooperation, uh, for the cooperation of technology. Um, that's huge. That's where peace is derived from. And so as you start seeing these types of uh, cooperations pop up, it's amazing. Those types of negotiations, it all comes down to economics. So and, and it's interesting, I, you know, I've spoken to quite a few people throughout that region uh, and when I was working uh, and through work, and, and it, it, it's amazing because what do they say? They say at the end of the day, it's, and this comes from, from individuals working, they care about their families, it's all about the economics, everybody's the same, they wanna really make, uh, make something great uh, for themselves and their families to rely on, you know, for, for, you know, time to come. So um, that's important. So if you can take that mindset and the reason why I really focused in on this because and the significance of what the cross border payment space means for the world. And as we see this transition into uh, this new economy and we start seeing what can happen with uh, Ripple, what you, what can happen with XRP, what can happen with, let's say, an XLM, or with a Bitcoin, etc. And as it becomes adopted and utilized, uh, and they call it a Sharia compliant exchange, whatever, um, that's important. Um, but as it becomes adopted and acceptable in uh, the Middle East, now you start seeing, and we uh, you brought up uh, Bitta uh, earlier, so now you see uh, the easier uh, transition and transaction of uh, of money uh, for crude oil for whatever it might be uh, through digital assets. To me, that that's amazing. Yeah, that's really really amazing. And one of the statements that they had here uh, in this article, and this came from uh, let's see, uh, Rain shall concentrate their effort availing their assets to high net worth institutions as Islamic hedge funds as well as super capitalized. Uh, family offices in that country. And then they said, this is a major milestone in the cryptocurrency and Islamic markets. This is the implementation of Rain's mission to provide the Middle East with a cryptocurrency exchange that meets the highest standards in terms of regulation, accessibility, security, and trust. So if anyone says that digital assets are not uh, the, the wave of the future, just look around uh, Switzerland. Uh, issuing uh, regulatory clarity. Thailand, issuing regulatory clarity. Japan, issuing regulatory clarity. The U.S. battling and lagging way, way behind. Uh, but Wyoming, issuing regulatory clarity when it comes to digital assets. There's so much happening. Those are just a few examples. Um, and the, the list goes on and on and on. So it, it's really amazing. Sorry, I kind of lost focus here. I'm going to have to wrap it up. I got to uh, in a minute, um, I'm gonna have to uh, jump off here. We got somewhere we gotta to be in a, in a little while, but let me uh, let me try to uh, wrap this up with with some other statements, uh, and then we'll we'll kind of be on our way for the morning. Um, uh, Ralph uh, sounds a bit phil philosophical. Crypto may just bring about more peace in this world. We can discuss all the positive strides made in Israel and Saudi Arabia in the same chat. <laughs> you like that? It's awesome. You know, who would have ever thought uh, that you could have that kind of a conversation?
you know and so as you look at the the structure of the middle east and then that was the point you know and if you go back uh, 10 years ago you go back pre 9 11 the the whole makeup of the middle east it was completely completely different you know and so you you look at it you look at these these war zones now and you see the struggles in the middle east and and it becomes very very obvious you know where where these where the negative actors are um it becomes very very obvious you know when you see uh where you see the positive reform you know and and there there was one in the middle east in general there was one true peace that was that was created between israel and jordan a good number of years ago and 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 that you know peaceful transaction happened because they both agreed that they were going to work together uh, towards peace, uh, and and they did over the years. And and behind the scenes, uh, Israel did provide a lot of security uh, for Jordan, whether they'll admit it or not. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, but Saudi Arabia coming to the table, and they have to embrace uh, the region for the betterment of the economics, for the economy of the region. Why shouldn't the Middle East be a booming economy? as a whole as a cohesive unit uh to compete against europe to compete against the u.s you know and i think that's one of the rational thoughts as they begin to westernize and implement but then as you see all these bad actors whether they're at the top leadership or from the terrorist entities uh that have unfortunately uh invaded and infiltrated uh many of the countries and then you have the bad seeds you have the bad actors like iran and the iranian government uh which has implemented their bad seeds in lebanon and in in syria and their antagonistic approach to the middle east as a whole and because of that it's interesting it's also facilitated and helped push uh saudi arabia and israel together which you never thought would ever happen economics economics is everything uh john yes venezuela hyperinflation uh volume spiked in in purchase of uh of bitcoin that's true venezuela venezuela collapsing um you know there's so many different things that that we could really get into if we want to get into the geopolitical uh discussion of uh, economics i mean it's amazing it's truly truly amazing what this digital asset space is going to mean uh for the world and for uh for the economies of the world but for uh peaceful existence of different countries with each other um as they tie in with each other um as they simplify the relationships with one another um that that's that's the message that's what it's really all about and that's it rob man digital assets will give a lot more wealth and financial control back to the people that's the premise you know that's that's what it's all about take it from uh from those that are trying to manipulate and control and that was the point also talking about um nigeria you know it, they've they've totally weaponized economics and our financials the government does that they do that to manipulate the people and they do that well and they do that readily uh easy uh, uh, relatively easily you know and it's and it's a shame you know but when you when you keep people oppressed um then at some point um there there's got to be a uh a cry out you know and so you can only oppress for so much but where the oppressive nature doesn't always necessarily uh come from <laughs> wp thanks uh I'll check you guys out uh, i'll check you out later um i'm just trying to summarize my thoughts thanks for being on uh thanks for bringing the chinese bamboo um you know so you know just just the oppressive nature of ever you know whether it's government whether it's uh the extremist elements uh within society that are trying to oppress free thought um you know it comes down to the people uh comes back down to all of us here uh chatting um and being able to get along as individuals that's the most important thing you know that's awesome you know and and it it it, it you know it doesn't matter uh the racial uh the racial differences it doesn't matter the religious differences it doesn't matter the national differences eventually you all come together and and you have a common theme which is the betterment of ourselves and our family and economics and and that's the bottom line the government will have to stop taking my money <laughs> yeah you know so you know they're they're and that that's bad you know um you know so that's the thing 
you know, we have to we have to all get along. Um, there, there are quite a few extremist elements within the world uh, that are, are dictating uh, the outcomes. Um, and we got to put an end to that. You know, we all have to work together uh, to put an end to that, uh, to, you know, to really live, you know, live, uh, live in, in, in peace and harmony, so to speak. So, um, so let me, let me just summarize here. I went a lot longer than, than I anticipated. Um, so just to kind of wrap up real quick, uh, on, on just one more note when it comes to, uh, uh regulatory, uh, clarity. I pulled up an article here. Where'd it go? Here it is. Um, and this has to do with the CFTC and BACT. Um, so the CFTC is the uh, Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Um, and per this article, this was on uh, Yahoo Finance. Um, the U.S. CFTC Commissioner Dan Berkowitz says the futures and options markets regulator is working hard on the BACT proposal. While he refused to provide a, an approval deadline, he did say that the agency is not anti-crypto or anti-blockchain. There you go. Uh, I think that's a huge statement. That's, that's definitely a huge statement. The commissioner of the CFTC specifically states the agency is not anti-crypto or anti-blockchain. Uh, like WB says, Chinese bamboo, have patience, uh, and, the, and this market will develop. Uh, same thing on the SEC. We see the commissioners... Uh, now I'm timing out again. So if uh, if this comes back, I don't know if this will come back or not. Um, uh, it's timing out. All right. Oh, I guess I'm, I'll be back for here for a minute. Let's see. <laughs> it freezes. It times out. And then uh, anyhow, I'm going to wrap it up. I got to go. I, we got uh, somewhere to be. Um, totally appreciate everybody coming on. If this uh, if this works. Um, let me see here. Yep. I agree. I agree. Um, totally, uh, <clears throat> totally appreciate everybody. Uh, enjoy, uh, enjoy your weekend. Uh, enjoy your Saturday. Uh, glad you could come on to this live chat. If you're hearing this, I'm not sure. Um, if you are, that's awesome. Hopefully it kicks back in. Looks like I'm frozen. Uh, not sure if this is going to, uh, transfer over. I'll just put a message out here. Um, you coming on look forward to seeing you on the next chat there we go i guess it kicked in but again you know totally appreciate everybody um taking their your time on a on an early uh saturday morning or afternoon whatever uh country you're tuning in from uh i, I had more to talk about we got into some great stuff today um again uh, Jeff with the Hotter Report. Hopefully, I'll see you guys uh, soon on the on the next live chat with no uh, no lag. But that's the nature of it, the nature of the beast here. Um, anyhow, look forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, keep one thing in mind: um, I'm not a, not a financial advisor, so everything I'm providing uh, is my opinion only, which I'm sure you guys completely understand. And at the end of the day, we got to. Uh, we got to do our own research and hopefully, you know, engage more and more in the community like this, um, because as we're engaging the community, we're all learning from each other, which is awesome. I don't have all the answers, um, but I, I love, you know, seeing the uh, feedback that you guys are providing. I learned so much from doing the live, uh, the live streams as I have from making the videos. So anyhow, uh, I'll see you uh, on the next chat. Until then, keep on hodling your crypto.